Hi, I'm Holly Pike. If you'd like a trial of the Generations software that I use for digitizing, please visit TryGenerations.com. This video is a recording of a live video I did for my previous students. You may hear references to You Can Digitize or YCD. That's my old website that is now closed. My new website is digitizingschool.com. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. All right, I'm going to start with a, doing a simple auto applique for you so that you can see how that works. And then I'm going to do the same design manually applique. Very simple. Then we're going to do a more complex design so you can see how I would handle the situations within that design. And it's just a matter of thinking through it. So I'm going to first choose my circle tool. Using the circle tool, you left click and drag in a diagonal motion until you get the desired size. Release your left mouse click and it makes your circle. Okay. I need to hit escape. When I hit escape, this box goes away. It leaves the running marquee around my circle. That's all standard in generations. I'm going to turn on my 3D view because I just like looking at it that way better. <laughs> okay. Let's make this into an auto applique. To do that, I hit my space bar to get into my stitch properties. Now let me show you something else. I'm going to cancel this. I can also get into stitch properties by going up here and clicking on this little, looks like a page with writing on it. It's the same box. I can also go to stitch and stitch settings. Notice it says space here. I click Stitch Settings, I get the same box. I think it's just easier to hit the space bar because you don't have to think about it. So I want to go into my stitch properties, I'll hit my space bar. We have all these stitch types that are available to us. I'm going to scroll over and choose Applique. Every stitch type in Generations has a tab up here. I'm going to choose Applique and we'll look at the screen. I think your default might be set to 3.0. I just changed mine to 2.5 because I just like that better. These are all of your settings for your auto applique. I generally leave them as the default. I generally don't um, play around too much with them because it works. And if it works, I don't try to fix it. Offset has to do with how far inside or outside the edge of that area is going to place your placement. Again, offsite has to do with how far inside or outside. Your offset is different here. I do change the width here. I'm going to make this 3.0 because for me personally, 4.0 is just really thick for an applique. We have the choice of, of what type of cover stitch, a satin or a blanket. I'm going to use a satin stitch. And we have the choice of using underlay or not. If you want your applique, your satin stitch, to stand up a little higher, go ahead and use underlay because that'll put another layer underneath it, a light layer, that's going to push that satin stitch up a little bit. OK. I'm going to click OK. And there's your applique. Let me change the color so you can see it. If you look over here in the film strip, you have your three pieces, your placement, your tack down, and your cover stitch. Very simple auto applique. Okay. Now I'm going to undo and get us back to here. Generate my stitches. To do a manual applique of a circle is very simple. I already have it right clicked or selected. I'm going to go into my view outline icon. A lot of you that have taken the digitize in a day class, you know this is my favorite icon in the whole program. And this is where you get to a lot of different features and things that you can do with areas. I'm going to select that. My circle turns gray. Anytime you see something gray on your screen and you want more options for what you're going to do to it, you right click inside the gray anywhere. I'm going to choose create outline 
from area edges. Another box opens up. I'm going to change this to a run. I just want it to go around one time. It doesn't have to be you know, a real big deal. We have choices of outside, inside, or all borders. In this instance, it's a circle, so there's only an outside border. If we had chosen satin border, we could change the width. And here's the offset again. Depends on how far outside or inside that circle is going to be. I'm going to leave it at zero because it does a good job at zero. I'm going to click OK. And you'll notice it's showing me where my outline is going to be. I say that's nice. And click Generate. I'm going to change the color here just so you can see what my outline looks like. So now you can see my outline is around the circle. I no longer need my circle, my shape. So I'm going to select it in my film strip and Control Delete. Okay. So now I just have my single stitch, my single run outline. Right down here in this, what they call the quick bar, it shows that it's just a simple run. If you want to change that when it's highlighted, click on the down arrow and you can see the choices that you have for that line. I'm going to leave it as a run. I need to drop my tool and get back so that nothing's highlighted. I will right click outside the hoop. Now I need to select my circle. So I'm going to select my circle with a left click. And the reason I'm using a left click is because I now want to copy and paste. You can't copy and paste. Well, maybe you can. Well, you can. How about that? I just learned something new. You can copy and paste whether it's left clicked or right clicked. So we're, we've got it selected. I'm going to choose copy and paste. Now you notice I have two of them in my film strip. And I'm going to click paste again. So those are the three parts of my applique. This would be my placement. This would be my tack down. And this would be my cover stitch when we change it to a satin stitch. When I do applique, you'll notice in my designs that the first one is red, the second one is blue, and the third one is whatever color, I'm going to choose this color here, is our cover stitch. The reason I do that is so that the machine stops. You have to have a change of color in order for the machine to know, oh, I'm done with that color, I have to stop now, so that you can lay your fabric down and then take your hoop and trim your fabric. So this is what, in my designs, applique will look like. Placement, tack down, cover. I don't, however, thread with red thread and then dark blue or purple and then this. I thread with my cover color. I stitch all three in the same color. Most digitizers do this. Okay, so that's just information sake. We use the different colors so that the color stops. So now I have my my placement and my tack down, but I'm going to take my cover stitch, select it in the film strip, hit my space bar, scroll over and choose satin border, go into the line tab because we have to adjust our line. If I go into the satin line, satin uh, tab, you can't adjust the line width. So I want to go into the line and I'm going to change this to 2.5 because I like 2.5, 3.0 works, whatever you like works, and then click OK. And now you can see that this applique looks identical to the auto-digitized applique, except it's thinner because I don't like the real thick applique. So you have an applique. Simple, easy, no big deal. Well, what if I wanted to change this into a baseball? I could grab my line tool. For those of you that have taken digitize in a day, you know where to find your line tool. And I can start right here. And I can put my lines in. And I'm going to travel along this area here and put my line in for my baseball. Now, the reason I traveled is if I start here and end here and I don't have a travel stitch, I'm going to have a jump stitch. 
I don't want to jump stitch, right? I don't want to have to cut any more than I have to cut. So now I have a baseball for my applique. But most of you are saying, uh-uh, Holly, you got a problem here. You see this? If you stitch this after that cover stitch, it's going to show. We don't want that to show. Well, you know what? You're absolutely right. So I'm going to select it in my film strip with a left click. I'm going to left click again and drag it up above my cover stitch. Generate my stitches. And you notice now that that, that little line stitch here is hidden as it should be. So I can change this line to whatever color I would like it to be. If I want it to be pink, or whatever color I want it to be for my baseball. So now when I stitch, I'm going to do my placement, my tack down, take it out of the, out of the, off the machine, do the trimming of the fabric, then I'm going to put it back in the machine and I'm going to do the detail lines. When I'm all fi finished stitching the detail lines, I'll put this bit color back on if I need to change colors, and I'll stitch my cover stitch. So now you've got a baseball applique. That's how manual applique works. It's really and truly very, very simple. And then Eileen's question uh, for both wool and auto applique. Asking okay. okay, where does the edge of the fabric fall um, under the satin stitch? If you look at my design that I, I brought up to 800%, you can see right where the placement and the tack down stitches are. When you trim, you're going to be trimming very close to this. You know, you're going to be trimming within, hopefully within, you know, a millimeter or two of this line right here. So your the edge of your fabric is um, probably like right here, you know, right about here, about, about halfway between this uh, tack down emplacement and the edge of your satin stitch. So you can see quite a bit of your fabric is covered in um, is covered in satin stitch. So it's it's really secured under there very well. And as far as the um, auto applique, you're going to have one line closer in and one line further out, so you're still going to have plenty of satin stitch covering that, that fabric to uh, hold it in place. Hopefully that answered your question. Okay, I'm going to close this. <clears throat> Actually, you know what, let me save this. I'm going to save this as, a, as the baseball file, and then I'm going to export i want to make sure I have export one. And I will put this design in the Generations Forum for you all if you want to stitch out this applique and see how it stitches. I'll be happy to do that for you. And let me export that. Okay. Now I'll close this and open up a new document. I'm going to bring in the artwork that we're going to do the applique of. <clears throat> Since we're bringing in artwork, we're going to go over here to the Insert Image icon. It'll open up a window to where your artwork is. You may need to navigate here to wherever you store your artwork. I'm going to choose this little guy and click OK. It's going to be image as a template because we don't want it to auto do anything. It's not a scanned image. It's not a photograph. So we're going to use image as template and click OK. Our resize box now comes up. And I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to take the larger number. And I'm going to make this 90. If I hit my Tab key, notice that this other one changes because I have maintained aspect ratio checked. You can also just hit OK, and it'll do it. Now here's our, our little applique guy. This happens to be a, a design, a piece of artwork that is created with the intention of doing applique. But you can do this same process with a design that just um, had this little guy in color, and you would just use the pieces the way I'm going to use them here. So you could use any design and make it into an applique if you want to be really creative. First thing I'd like to do is, is evaluate this design. What am I going to do first 
and how am I going to do it? So just like with any other digitizing, any other design, I want to analyze what is the furthest in the background because I want to do that first. So I build the design from the background to the foreground. So here's, I think my leaves are going to go first, right? Because he's sitting on top of a tree or on top of the leaves. And if my leaves go first, then this one has to go first, then this one second, then this one third, and this one fourth. You could do each one of these individually by creating this applique and doing that leaf, then going back and creating this applique. But you would see that this little line over here of colors when we start to generate them would be like 100 long. So I'm going to show you how I would do this design. And um, again, if you know anything about me, I'm going to find the, the most efficient way to do something. So um, let's go ahead and start. And I'm going to start with these leaves here. First thing I'll do is bring my view up to my 400%. Those of you that have taken my class know that I always work at 400% to have a consistency in the, the view that I get. So the first thing I want to do is this here. I want to do these leaves. <clears throat> well, the only thing that's critical here for the cover stitch is this. I'm going to pick up my line tool, and I'm going to start here using left and right clicks, right click for a curve, left clicks for points, so that's a left click. I'm going to work my way around like this to here. Down right to there. I'm going to hit enter. Oops, let me change my color so that it's something you can see. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a line in there. This is this is my placement. Okay. Then I'm going to come over. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just using the line tool. I'm not going to give it a real deep point there because sometimes that those satin stitches don't like a really, really deep point. So I'm going to, you know, cut my losses here and do that. Okay. I'm going to change my color. Hit escape. I'm going to change my color. Right now it's yellow. If I want to choose the same red, I select the yellow one and then I right click on the red one and it changes the color for me. So if you look, you'll see that I have a placement here and a placement here. So what I would do is I would stitch that. Then I would lay my leaf fabric down like that, around it like just like this. And I would stitch the next thing that I'm going to make. I'm going to select this one with a left click, hold my control key down, and select that one with a left click. Now I'm going to copy and paste. See how they show up here? And I'm going to paste again, just like I did with the circle. Remember how we did it with the circle? So now I have six of these. The first two are the placement. The second two are the tack down. So they're going to be blue. Okay. The third set is the cover stitch. So I'm going to select those and then come over here and change my color to green. Right, click outside the hoop so you can see. So we have placement, tack down, cover. But we also need to add these little detail things. And this is why I picked this design because this can be confusing to a person that, that's never done this before. I'm going to bring my view back up to 400. Now I want to put these little detail stitches in. So I'm going to take my line tool. I'm going to start right here. I'm going to put these lines in. And I'm going to make sure I'm into this yellow because I want that to be covered. Then, if you've done red work with me, you know that I'm going to start right on top of that yellow piece of thread and put this next one in. I'm going to start right on top of this one. Put the next one in. I'll hit Escape. Now I'm going to merge these three pieces together like I would in red work because I don't want jump stitches. I don't want anything weird to happen. So I'm going to use the wonderful, wonderful 
merge feature in generations that um, is pretty much exclusive generations. Um, Artista does something close, but it's not as good. I'm going to select them all using my control key and left clicking. Go to my view outline icon. They turn gray. So remember what I said about things that turn gray. When they turn gray, that means you're looking for another menu. I'm going to right click. Notice what happens to my cursor when I press on my right click. It changes to a little circle. I'm going to right click. Menu comes down. And I'm going to choose merge. Generate my stitches. Now if you look right here, you'll see, if I change this color by right clicking on the color chip, you'll see that they're all one piece now. Okay? I'm going to take my line tool. I'm going to do this one. And I'm hitting enter when I complete my line. Okay, right here, I'm just hitting enter. I'll hit escape to drop my tool. And again, I'm going to select these using left clicks, holding my control key down. You can see that they're all flashing at me. I'll go to my view outline icon, right click right on top of the gray, and choose merge. Generate my stitches. It's yellow. I want it to be green, so I'm going to right click on the green chip, and it turns it green. Okay, so now we have those detail ones in here. Let's go over here and put this one in. Pick up my line tool. Just like I did the other ones. Make sure now that you're starting, if you can see, I'm starting right on top of that thread. That's why I'm working in 3D view, so that I can clearly see where my thread is. Okay. Escape to drop my tool. I'm going to select all of these. See how they're flashing at me? Go to View Outline icon. Right click on the gray. Choose Merge. Generate my stitches. Now that one is one piece. I'm going to right click on the green to make it green. Pick up my line tool. Put the next one in. Now, if there's no detail in your applique, you don't have to worry about doing this. But I want you to understand where to put the detail in the stitching order for the applique. Otherwise, you're going to have an unhappy result. Remember the baseball when I had the detail after the cover stitch, the satin stitch? You could see it. Well, we don't want to see all the stuff. We want it to be hidden. I'm going to hit Escape, holding my Control key down. Select each one of these pieces, view outline icon, right click in the gray, choose merge, generate my stitches, choose green, generate again. Now I'm going out to my, my um, fill the screen view. So you can see now if I, now I'm going to change, okay, if I don't move these pieces, it's going to be on top of my, um, Detail. So I'm going to select these two pieces, which is the cover stitch. Remember up here, these are the cover stitch. Hit my space bar. Remember how I did the manual applique with the circle? Same thing. Choose my satin border. Go into my line and make this say 2.5 or 6. And click OK. Now it put my cover stitch in for me. Okay? But you see how the, if I change these color, this color, you're going to see what happens. See what happens? My detail now is on top of my applique. Well, we don't want that to happen. So let me undo that color change. And now what I'll do is by left clicking on each of these film strip items and holding my control key, I can select all four of them. I'll now left click again until my cursor changes to the little four arrows and drag this up above my cover stitch. Generate my stitches. Right click. Generate my stitches. If I now change the color of these, let me show you what it looks like. See how your detail stitches now are underneath your satin stitch. That's how you put detail in to have it covered and have it look like it's supposed to look. Let me undo to change the color of my stitches. 
Okay. That's a little complex. You may have to watch this part, you know, uh, that part a couple of times to see how I did that. But there's still a problem. There's still a problem. When I copy and pasted my cover stitch, it doesn't look the way I really want it to look, does it? So let me show you how to make it correct. I'm going to control delete my cover stitch. Go back to four to four, 400. Pick up my line tool and I'm going to put a new line right directly on top of this tack down. Only this time, I'm going to stop there. Then I'm going to come here, put it right on top. like that. Over here, do this one. I have to do this one first. Hopefully you're saying because it's underneath the other one. Okay. Right on top of the blue one. So you really can't mess it up because with the thread going, you can clearly see where you should be putting that line. Go out to my fill the screen view and hit escape and right click to drop my tool. Now I've got these pieces that are the cover stitches, right? Let's change them to green by right clicking. Generate our stitches. They're still highlighted, so I'm going into my stitch properties. Scroll over, choose satin border. If you want to adjust the width of the line, you can do that to 2.5 and generate. Now what you see is, what you see is, let me bring this up a little bit so you can really see what I got. What you see here is the cover stitch coming this way and going underneath this one, this one covering. So now it looks finished. It looks like you really know what you're doing, right? That's pretty complex. You just have, you have to think it through very carefully. Go through it very, very systematically. Let's do his tail now because the tail is the next thing we would do. So hopefully you're saying with me, okay, we're gonna, she's gonna do a line now. And that's correct, I'm gonna do a line. Okay, I have a question? Gotta be careful when I'm mute. Last time I accidentally hit the hang button, <laughs> I had to dial back in again. We had a question a, a few minutes ago, and I was just thinking, boy, this is a good time to bring this question up, and that was, um, when you're working on a design, do you save it often or just when you finish? And that question is from Pat. And I'm looking at this design, how much time you put into it? Okay, Pat, that's a great question. If if I was um, digitizing this, you know, real time for, for real use, which I suppose I am, I would save um, probably after creating these detail stitches, I would save this design. And then I would put this in and save it so that if anything did happen, because software programs crash, if anything did happen while I was doing these, I would still have all that work that I did save. So let's go ahead and save. I'm going to click my save icon. And I'm going to name this. I've already done one as I was practicing and deciding how I was going to teach you all to do this. Name it and save. Now I'm pretty safe. If the program crashes or anything strange happens, um, I've I've got my belt and suspenders on so that I'm I'm pretty safe. Okay, good question, Pat. Any other questions? Yes, it will. It will auto save. Yeah, I actually had myself muted there. It yes, it will auto save. Now that we've saved it, it'll it'll automatically save for us. But remember that you can do a lot of work in three minutes. Once you're experienced, you can do a lot of work in three minutes or five minutes. So keep in mind that autosave doesn't always, you know, save you when um, when you do sometimes what I do, I get into it and I forget to save. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is his tail. So I'm going to take my line tool and I'm going to start the tail up here well into this blue. And I'm going to come down here. I'm using right clicks and le left click on these points and right clicks around like this. Just following it around right inside, just like coloring inside the lines and end right there. Okay. 
Now I'm going to select it and then copy, paste, paste. If you look down here, I've got three of them. The first one, I'm going to change to this same red. The second one, I'm going to right click on the blue. Okay. The third one, I'm going to choose down here a new color, light blue. Okay, so you, can, you all can see that. So I've got my three pieces, placement, tack down, and color. But we have some detail lines we need to put in. So let's go back up to our 400 and put our detail lines in. Pick up my line tool. I'm going to start right here. I come down. Put my detail lines. Here's my travel stitch. Remember how I did the travel stitch with the baseball? There's my travel stitch. I'm going to come up here and say end. Change my color to blue so it blends in. And I'm hoping that, that by now you're saying, oh, she's got to move that detail stitch, which is correct. This is the cover stitch. This is the cover stitch. You can tell because it goes all the way around the tail feathers. This one is the detail because the highlighting is just this piece. So I'm going to left click on it, then left click again, drag it up above the tail feathers. Okay. Now let's take our cover stitch, go into our stitch properties by hitting spacebar, scroll over, satin border. You want to change the width of your line, you can do that here, and click OK. Now we have our tail feathers in there, and they look pretty nice. So each time you do, like the leaves, you might lay your green down and stitch your green. Trim out as, you know, as well as you can, trim out as well as you can, and then lay your blue down to do your blue. Now, this little area here, I'm going to make it yellow, but I'm not going to make it an applique because it's awfully tiny. And by the time you put your cover stitch in there, it's just going to cover it up. So let's go up to our 400 view. These are just decisions that you have to make as you're digitizing. I'm going to use my satin tool. That's this one right here. And I'm going to put my satin stitch in like this. Now remember the satin stitch is what we call the back and forth tool, the side the side uh, to side satin stitch, count point counterpoint tool. I always get that messed up. Um, there's always one that goes right and one that goes left. When I get to here it's going to be left click and the click. And now I've got a little satin area, but I don't want it to be a real heavy satin. I want to add a little texture to that. So I'll hit my space bar for my stitch properties. Satin is already selected. Remember how I told you that each stitch type has a tab? Well, so does the satin. Down here is where your density is. Point 0.4 is the um, default. I'm going to highlight that and type in 0 0.8. Okay. The reason I did 0 0.8 is because I know what that's going to look like, and I'm going to show you right now what it's going to look like. It's going to give it some texture and make it a little bit lighter so that when we put this next piece over with the satin stitch, this is just going to kind of stick out underneath the bottom, and it's going to look like little feathers sticking out underneath um, the little, the little parrot. It just adds a little bit of interest. I'll right click, click to drop my tool. I'm going to turn off my 3D so I can see under here to my blue line now. Let's put this next piece in, this dark piece in, because that's underneath the bird. Pick up my line tool. Start right here. I'm just going to follow my shape. And notice how everything's going to be covered because I made sure that I was well into this other line, these colored lines, okay? Let's change this to a darker blue. I'm going to turn on my 3D view so you can see. I'm going to ask, what am I going to do next? Hopefully you're going to say copy, paste, and paste again. So I'm going to copy and paste and paste again. Here's my three pieces. If I go out to my 
fill the screen view, I'm going to generate my stitches. You're going to see that we don't really have to do anything special here now. We've got the first one, which is our placement. I'm going to make it the same red. The second one is tack down. I'm going to make it the same blue. And the third one is going to be my darker blue. Now remember, when you stitch applique, you thread this color and stitch all three in your cover color. Then you thread this color and stitch all three in your cover color. Okay, make your life simple for yourself. Here's our cover stitch one. I'm going to hit my space bar, scroll over to satin border, change my stitch length, click OK. And there's my next piece of my applique. And see how this yellow just little peeks out a little bit? It's kind of cute. Next thing we're going to do is this area here. I'm going to pick up my line tool. First, I'm going to go to 400. Let's just look at one thing. Let's look at our in and our out. That's exactly what it means. They're movable. You can take them and move them just by grabbing them and dragging them. Okay. I want to start my um, applique, this, the applique, close to where I went out, as close as I can to where I went out. But go out. If I, if I start here, then I'm going to come around like this. I can't go around here because that's part of the beak. I don't want to do that. So really, I need to start either up here or down here. So we're going to have a jump stitch. Not a big deal. Jump stitch isn't a big deal as long as there's a reason for them. We're going to have a jump stitch or a tie off. If it's a different color, it'll be a tie off over here. Machine will move and come over here and stitch the next one. So I'm going to pick my line tool. And I'm going to put this in. Around like this. So you kind of have to think it out a little bit before you before you do it. There's my shape, right? Well, in this instance, my cover stitch, I'm going to make orange. Okay, so we have this one selected. So to escape, so selected. Next thing I'm going to do is what? Copy, paste, and paste. So I get the three. You're kind of getting the idea that there's a process and a pattern. Here's my placement. I'm going to make that one red or pink. Here's my tack down. I make that my light blue. And then here's my cover stitch. I'm going to scroll over here and make it orange. Okay, so now I, I can see clearly what I have. I have my placement, tack down, and cover. Ollie's audio is back, I, so. I think by now, even if you missed 30 seconds or so, I think by now you all kind of have the pattern of creating, creating the area, then copy, paste, and paste. And changing the color. I think you probably understand that by now. So I don't think that would be a real critical thing if we lost a little audio for the webinar purposes. Okay, so here we are. We have our placement, our tack down, and our cover. But we have some detail things we need to put in, right? Okay, let's go up to our 400 view. Let's put the details in. I'll pick up my line tool, and I'll start, remember, right here on top of that orange thread. And I'll come here. And I'll just go along like this. I'm putting my running stitches in. Okay. Now, some of you might say, well, Generations puts running stitches in. Yes, it does. It'll do it for you. But when you're doing something very specific like this, where you don't have anything covering in this area, you really want to kind of put them in because it's, it could just cause you more headaches not doing that. I'm just going to come up here like this. Okay, there's our detail stitches. Scroll up a little bit, and I'm going to start right on top of this one. Okay. 
Okay. Let's go here. Here's where it's coming out, right here. So what I want to do is, I want to take my out and put it right here. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I don't have a jump stitch. I could merge these two, this one and this one. I could merge them. But I want to show you that you can take this out. And that's the last place the needle's coming out for that color, for that, that area that you're, you're doing. So I can take my out and tell it where I want it to come out. So my thread's going to stop here. When I select the next one, it's going to go right in right there. So there's going to be no break. It's going to stitch this and then stitch that. There's going to be no break. Okay, so if I go out, right click to drop my tool, these little detailed guys need to go up above the cover stitches. So I'm going to select them using my control key, select one, hold my control key, select the other one, left click on them again, drag them up above the orange. And that's why I change the colors before I do anything else because I know the orange is my cover stitch. Now I'll select my orange, hit my space bar, select satin, go to line, just 2.5, and generate. And there's my cover stitch for my body of the parrot. Now there's one thing we might want to do. Right here, you see how this little piece here sticks out? So let's select that. Go into our view outline icon. He's gray, so again, I hope you're saying right click on the gray. Choose edit outline mode. And let's just move him in a little bit. I'm just left clicking and, and kind of dragging those little nodes over and moving him. Go to one to one, generate our stitches. That looks a little better. Okay. So our detail stitches now need to be made into that orange. So I'm going to select them again by left clicking and holding my control key and right click on the orange. Right click outside the hoop, generate my stitches. So we're getting pretty close to being done, right? Next thing is the beak. Let's go up to our 400. And here's what our little navigator, remember I promised to show you what the little navigator is about? If I move my design like this, Ordinarily, in most software, you're going to have to just kind of scroll up and go, well, you know, where the heck is that beak? Well, with our little navigator bar, I can come over here and just click, and it brings me right down in the design to where I want to be. So you can see the design building here as we do it. If I click down here, it takes me over to the tail, over here to the leaf, back here to the beak. I think that's a really cool feature. All right, let's do the beak. Take my line tool, start right here. And I happen to know that this beak is going to be really big, so I'm going to make it a little smaller. Because when I did the first one, I had to resize the beak, and I'm just going to do it now. There's no, no big crime with that. You can do that without any kind of a problem. OK, so there's my beak. I'll escape and right click outside the hoop to drop my tool. He's already selected the beak. I'm going to copy, paste, paste. The first one, we make red. Second one, we make blue. And the third one, I'm going to make dark red. Actually, let's make it a lighter red so that they're different. Okay. We have some detail lines again. Let's go up to our four to four, four to one, 400 view. Pick up our line tool, start right on top of that red, and just follow the path of this line, just like that. Escape. Right click on the right, so that they're the red, so that they're the same color. Generate your stitches. Now I'm going to move those detail stitches underneath the cover stitches. Generate our stitches. Select our cover stitches. You right click and generate them. Select our cover stitch layer. Hit the space bar. 
Let's go over to satin, line, change this to 2.5. Now you can have different widths of satin stitches within your applique if you like. You can be as creative as you like and generate my stitches. Go out to our one to one view, and there's our parrot with all the applique stuff done. One thing you probably should know is if I select this beak, the satin stitch, and hit my spacebar, go into satin tab, I can apply a satin fill to this applique. Clicking on select pattern, I could choose this one. Say OK and OK. And it gives a little different look to your applique. So you might want his beak to have some texture. Okay, we, we'll put in these little detailing things here. Let's go up to our 400 view. Again, we can click there, take my line tool. Yeah. And I'm just going to put a line down and a line up like that. It's just a little mark. Let's go to the screen, hit escape, and right click. Let's select them. Go over, pick black. Now, one thing we do want to do is we want to make sure that all of our detail lines, and I, I'd like them all to be a triple run. So I'm going to select, I'm not going to select this one because he's really tiny. Doesn't need to be a triple run. But I'm going to select all my little detail lines by holding my control key. And you can watch them as they turn to hide, you know, to highlight and to flashing at you here. All my little detail lines. Like that. And down here is our quick bar. I'm going to change them by clicking on that up arrow to a triple run. I just like the look of a triple run. Right click outside the hoop. And our design is completed. I will encourage you that when you've completed a design, let's save it. I should have saved that long ago. When you've completed a design and you're ready to send it to your machine to stitch, I'm going to highly recommend to you that you remove your artwork. To do that, this is your hide and view image. If I click on that, my image goes away and I see a dotted line around my design. I can now left click and drag that artwork away from my design. Hit delete and it goes away. It makes a smaller image for saving. That way you don't have two copies of your artwork on your computer, one that you digitize from and one that's in your design. And it makes your design file smaller for people. Let's talk about one other thing here. You're going to look at this and some people are going to look at this and say, oh my goodness, look at all those color changes. Well, remember, we don't have all those color changes. We have a green with the applique steps. So this is going to be green, 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 because you're going to thread with green. Then it's going to be light blue, light blue, light blue. You don't have to change colors in between these. Then it's going to be yellow. Then you have dark blue, dark blue, dark blue. Orange, orange, orange. Bright red, bright red, bright red, and black. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors in our designs, seven color changes only, even though it looks like there's a whole lot more. So that's our, our applique, and that's how you would do it. If you brought in a design that had a black outline, you would use the black outline just like I use the outlines in this artwork to determine which pieces were going to be appliqued when and in what order. Okay? Questions? I'm sure we have some questions. Oh, you. Can you hear me on the... Okay, great. Hi, I'm Larry. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was recorded during a live webinar that Holly taught some of her students for digitizing. At this point, she's finished the lesson that she had planned to teach, and for the next 20 or 30 minutes, probably, she'll go on and answer random questions from her students during the live webinar. I'm going to cut those off and I'm going to take those and turn them into little video shorts to put here on our YouTube channel later. 
But for now, you've got this lesson, and if you enjoyed it, learned something, please give it a thumbs up. That helps our rankings with YouTube. Um, also, if you'd like a copy of the software that Holly's using so that you can digitize along with her, we can get you a 30-day trial that's fully functional if you just go to www.trygenerations.com www.trygenerations.com and we'll give you all the details there. Thanks for watching.